Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. The question is, can Democrats win anything these days? Jonathan Ossoff got a tremendous amount of free publicity, a lot of hype from the press for his campaign to win a House seat in the 6th District of Georgia, a place he doesn't actually live. He received more than $8 million in donations. A bunch of celebrities showed up to help him. The national press anointed him repeatedly a rising star. And yet the verdict from the district's actual voters? No thanks. Ossoff received 48% of the vote, about what Hillary Clinton got in November, and he was defeated by the combined support for the many, many, almost countless number of Republicans running in that race. President Trump gloated on Twitter saying, quote, Dems failed in Kansas and are now flailing in Georgia. It's now Hollywood versus Georgia on June 20th, which is the runoff. What did Ossoff have to say? Well, last night he delivered a speech calling his showing a loss, quote, a victory for the ages. Is this the best victory Democrats can muster? Brad Woodhouse is the former president of Americans United for Change. He was a senior advisor to the DNC during Barack Obama's presidential runs, and he joins us tonight. Brad, it's great to see you. Thanks Thank for being you. bold enough to come on and explain <laughs> no what problem. happened last night. So this is the future of the Democratic Party, a guy who loses. Well, look, if you, if you, by that reckoning, Karen Handel lost. I mean, she came in, uh, she came in below Ossoff. And so, look, we, we're going to a runoff. We, we don't know what will happen in June. I think there's a fighting chance. The key here for Democrats, Tucker, is that going into 2018, they have to show they can compete in these districts, whether they're right. suburban red districts, whether they're rural red districts. They have to show they can compete. They showed here, they closed the margin. You know, the best the Democrat had done in that seat uh, was about 36 percent. He got to 48 in this. Let's see what he does in June. Well, that's great. Where, where do you pick up the participation trophy? Um, is it in the district or well, like? Let, well, what, what well, 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 let's, well, Tucker. I mean, let's see. I mean, we we may win this in June. No, you Look, might. You all... absolutely might. But what's the strategy? Is it to well, convince say... more ra more voters that you hate them? Call more Trump voters racist? <laughs> do you think that's working? No, I don't think at all. Look, I think hmm. what worked. To get him to 48 percent in striking distance of 50 was to make this a referendum on Trump. And you know, Karen Handel did not run uh, as a Trump Republican uh, in the race uh, leading up to last night. She doesn't want this to be a referendum on Trump. So I think he had the right strategy. Let's see what happens in June. But Tucker, all the all wait, this but just, can, can guys be clear in case our, our viewers are just turning in, tuning in now. He ran against I think 11 Republicans who split the again the Republican vote 11 ways. So like, how could you lose to 11? Republicans. Well, remember he got most. He got 48 percent of the vote. Right. Karen Handel, the next uh, closest uh, Republican, only got 19, and there were four or five other Democrats in the race. Uh -huh. So 48 percent is pretty impressive. So what? <laughs> well, it doesn't get you into Congress, I notice. But what's the strategy? Like, what's the theme that undergirds this guy's campaign? If he's a template for Democrats running in the post-Trump era, what exactly is he running on? Is it higher wages? Is it an end to the opiate crisis, or is it I'm friends with a ton of famous actors in Los well, Angeles? I don't, I don't think it's friends with a ton of famous actors. I mean, look, this is an opposition party right now, Tucker, mm -hmm. so I think a big part of it is going to be running as a referendum uh, on Donald Trump, on a presidency that has gone off the rails, that hasn't accomplished anything. And I think the one big issue that you can count on in, in a suburban uh, district like this is health care. People really care about this issue. Uh, I think it's hurt the Republicans, both their failure to, uh, to repeal Obamacare, but also the fact that it was going uh, to cause so many people to lose coverage. But so, so I think health care will be a big issue. I think the environment will be a big issue. But, but, with, like but with respect, you said that, that you know, it's an opposition party, and so you're running against the president in power, which I guess makes sense, except the entire Hillary Clinton for president campaign was based on the very same idea that Trump is evil, you're a bad person if you support him, you're indeed deplorable. And by the way, it didn't work, as you know. So where are the middle class bread and butter issues that get people elected, like, I don't know, Bill Clinton. Like, those work. Why aren't they well, talking about them? Well, look, I, 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 if, if health care is not a bread and butter issue, I don't know what is. That is, uh, that is an issue that has had, uh, taken a toll on the president's popularity. It's taken a toll on Republicans. I think it was one reason uh, that the race in Kansas got as close but, as but, it did. But, but what's was... the argument? I mean, I get it. And then, by the way, that's legitimate. Health care is a real issue. Is it running on Obamacare? Is that the argument? Are Democrats going to say? And you could also argue, well, I, I think, legitimately, that Trump people didn't do a good job selling their program. Fine. 
But are Democrats going to run on Obamacare? Like, it's well, great. Can, it's well, so I much can, better than you think it is. Is that the line? I can, I can tell you what. I was involved in a campaign in 2012 where the president uh, at that time ran for re-election on Obamacare, and he got re-elected. I think Democrats should lean into Obamacare. This whole notion that it's in a death spiral has been debunked, been debunked by the CBO, been debunked by other, uh, other experts. I would run on maintaining uh, Obamacare. So what, what's, what's the approval rating for Obamacare? All in, not parts of it, not the individual mandate, but the whole program. What's well, the approval rating among swing voters, the kind you need to win elections? Well, I don't know. The last poll I saw nationally, uh, Obamacare had a 56% approval rating. The president had a 41% approval rating. So I'll take Obamacare uh, if I'm Ossoff over Trump if I'm Handel. Well, but, okay, Trump is not above 50 in most polls, and it shouldn't be surprising because he's an agent of Russia who will be impeached. Do you remember that? We were hearing <laughs> that two weeks ago from members of Congress. People are going to jail. The president's going to lose his job because he's working for Vladimir Putin. What happened to that story? Well, I don't know. I think, I think the real story here is not what he's doing now. It's what occurred uh, before the but election. But where is it? I mean, there's another cable channel that led with it every single night for weeks. Your voters loved it. They're not leading with it at all this week. There's no well, look, New York I, look, Times think, editorial calling for impeachment based on his closeness to Putin. Well, well, I, it, was, it was a matter of national security, Brad. How can we be ignoring that? <laughs> look, I think what's happened is, is that we're trying to figure out where the Carl Vincent is, Tucker. We're trying to figure out where this armada that was supposed to be going to North Korea is. There are well, a lot but of other things it, to What does that have to do with the fact that the president of the United <laughs> States is a puppet dangling from the strings controlled by well, the evil me, Vladimir Putin in the Kremlin? I've been hearing well, that for five months. Months. What well, happened well, to that story? Well, oh, wait, me, it's false? Well, no, I'll tell you what I think happened. This president is under scrutiny, both politically and legally, uh, for what happened before the election, for what happened with Russia. On the, you know, he, that he and his campaign may have colluded. Now, we know for a fact that Russia intervened in the election to benefit Trump. Everyone agrees with that. All the intelligence agencies, the FBI, and bipartisan <laughs> membership no, on actually, the Actually, that's not, that's not factually true. There's no but, evidence, there's no evidence that Russia, the Russian government, broke into or had anything to do with the break in, with the violation of John Podesta's Gmail account. There's no evidence of that. I don't think the intel community believes that. And so it's just not true to say there's a consensus on it, because there isn't. Well, the consensus is, is that they intervened in the election, interfered in the election to benefit Donald Trump. What may be true is that his campaign colluded. Now, what can be true is that the president now, facing that scrutiny, that legal scrutiny, the uh -huh. investigation, uh, now can't cozy up to Putin and can't do all of his bidding. And of course, oh. of course, Vladimir Putin is so angry now. So the conspiracy now. continues. So in other words, to, no, throw, to throw the bloodhounds off his scent, no, he no, has in that. fact taken even, a position hostile to Russia. That's very clever. No, Almost diabolical, say, you might say. I'm not even saying it's a conspiracy. I'm saying, look, that he may, that he may have figured out the right approach that he, to put U.S. interests ahead of Russian interest in Syria, in North Korea. And if, if he's doing that, legitimately, I applaud it. Okay, so he shouldn't go to prison now for subverting American democracy on behalf I, of Vladimir Putin. Well, I, well, when I, are we going to admit never. that it was just wrong, that this was like a silly way to account for a loss you didn't expect? She ran a bad campaign. The middle class doesn't like Democrats anymore. Why don't you just admit that rather than blaming it on a foreign power in this insane way? Well, this, I don't, this is not even about blaming it on a foreign power. This is about, look, the FBI is investigating this, Tucker. If you, you know, if you have an issue with them, FBI you can bring... Invest, investigate, I do have an you, issue you with the FBI, bring, actually. You can bring, you can bring, but, but, but leaving that aside, well, yeah. the FBI, as you know, gravely hurt the presidential campaign of Hillary Clinton. No one mentions Correct. that on the left, I notice. But no, the point is not what the did, FBI yeah. is investigating. The point is the narrative for five months was that he is literally illegitimate. He participated in an assault on the most sacred institution of American life, which is, of course, democracy. And now, because he did something that the left approves of, i.e. bombing Syria, we're just going to kind of forget about it. Well, I don't think anyone's forgetting about it. But look, this really is in the hands uh, of the FBI, of the Senate and House uh, intelligence committees. They are investigating whether or not Did anyone uh, really Donald believe Trump it? On it? Let's be I mean, I know that there are people watching. Let's pretend there weren't. Did Democrats at a high level, did you or all the other ones, members of Congress, yelping about betrayal of democracy, impeachment, imprisonment, do they actually believe that stuff? Do you think they did when they said that? Was that heartfelt or was it just part of a series of talking points? Well, look, I, I, be I believe there's something there. Now, whether or not it rises to Donald Trump is another, is another question. I mean, look, it, it, the, the FBI asked for a FISA warrant. Uh, uh, for Carter Page. I mean, and this was a, poli a foreign policy advisor uh, to President Trump. They, I guess, they, they couldn't not have really. done it. I well, mean, no I one mean, Carter Page wasn't he, he really an actually. He was on he some committee. Him. 
I mean, maybe, but I mean, nobody believes Carter Page was central to the Trump campaign. Trump and his daughter were sent. That was kind of it. So, like, it was a dumb story. And my question is, did anybody, do you really think that when Nancy Pelosi was out there saying that, like, our country was in peril, our national security was violated, did she really believe that, do you think? Well, no, here's what I believe. I believe that Russians interfering in our democracy, whether they did it uh, to benefit Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, or if they, they do it in a future election to hurt a Republican. I think that's a problem. I'm okay. sure you agree that that's a problem. I mean, I, I think we're overstating it dramatically for political reasons, and we're trying to pretend it never happened, all this hysteria. But some of us have long memories, so I'm going to torment <laughs> my do. friends on the left for months over this. Brad, thank you for coming on. Hey, thank you, Tucker.